Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the general structure of the human circulatory system. You should then be able to describe the functions of arteries, veins and capillaries. And if you're following the AQA spec, you need to be able to name the arteries and veins serving the kidneys. In the last video we saw that mammals have a double circulatory system. I'm showing you a simplified diagram of the human circulatory system here. In this diagram I've not included details of the heart, as we're looking at that in a later video. However, you need to remember that the blood in the right side of the heart is deoxygenated, and the blood in the left side of the heart is oxygenated. Also, the heart is always shown as if you're facing a person, so the right side is shown on the left, and the left side is shown on the right. Also, you'll notice that the only organs I've named are the kidneys. Ok, now the first key idea you need to understand is that blood leaves the heart in arteries. Now the blood in the arteries is under very high pressure, and the pressure increases every time the heart contracts. This is called the pulse. But it's important that you understand that blood continually moves forward in arteries, even between contractions, and we'll see why that happens when we look at the structure of arteries. Blood travels from the heart to the lungs in the pulmonary artery, and the pulmonary artery is the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood. Oxygenated blood travels from the heart to the body in a very large artery called the aorta. The aorta divides, and these arteries carry oxygenated blood to different organs. The individual arteries are named based on the organ that they supply, so the kidneys are supplied by the renal arteries. Now before the blood reaches the organs, it passes through blood vessels called arterioles, and we'll be looking at arterioles in the next video. Once the oxygenated blood reaches the organs, it passes through very narrow blood vessels called capillaries. Capillaries are the sites of gas exchange, with oxygen diffusing from the blood to the body cells. Carbon dioxide also diffuses from the body cells back into the blood. Once the blood has passed through the capillaries, the blood pressure is much lower, and the blood is no longer surging in pulses. Now the blood passes into larger blood vessels called venules, and then into veins. Veins carry deoxygenated blood away from the organs towards the heart, and veins are named based on the organ that they come from. So the veins from the kidneys are called the renal veins. Now you need to remember that in the veins, the blood is under relatively low pressure, and the blood is not surging in pulses. All of the veins from the body organs finally connect into one very large vein called the vena cava, and the vena cava returns the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. So as we've seen, veins carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart. However, there is one exception to this. Blood travels from the lungs to the heart in the pulmonary vein, and the blood in the pulmonary vein is oxygenated. Now over the next couple of videos, we're going to explore the structures of the different blood vessels. And the key thing to remember is that the structure depends on the function of each blood vessel. Ok, so hopefully now you can describe the general structure of the human circulatory system. 